This podcast is on lentic ecosystems, so that should be your heading. Any system that's considered a lake, a pond, or a wetland falls under this category of a lentic ecosystem, uh, which makes them different from things like rivers or streams or creeks. First thing I'm going to discuss is how lakes are actually formed. Um, there are four major areas in the U.S. with an abundance of natural lakes. I do want you to record what these areas are. I'm going to highlight what you might want to write down here. So there are limestone lakes. in Florida and basically what this means these limestone solution lakes I'll get rid of this quick okay so these limestone solution lakes um, means that this limestone in these areas of Florida is very acidic and so when it rains it starts to kind of eat away at the limestone um, so the acids in the water and things kind of gouge out these limestone um, areas and create lakes, which are kind of like little pockets within the limestone. Uh, the mountain lakes of the Pacific Northwest, so obviously these were formed by mountain ranges rising and falling. The glaciated lakes that we have in our area means they were formed by glaciers. And then some other glacier formed lakes near the Adirondack Mountains in Northeast United States. So they all were formed a little bit differently in a little bit different ways, again, from either dissolving of the limestone, um, mountain lake formation, so mountains rising, <clears throat> and from glaciers, either in our area or in the Adirondacks. We are gonna focus on, of course, though, our area and our glacier lakes. So this is just a general diagram of how glaciers can form lakes. So if we start up here at the top and we look at what's happening, this active ice means that's the moving part of the glacier. So the glacier is moving along and it's carrying with it some sediment. That's what you see these little speckles in there. And as it moves or retreats in our case, because the glaciers moved back north as the ice age ended, they can leave behind chunks of ice, which is this outwash plain here. And they can also leave behind piles of ice and sediment, which is the moraine. Okay, so you want to, you know, make a note of yourself or a note for yourself, whether it's through a diagram or um, just by writing about these two things, what they are. So again, there are two ways that glaciers can form lakes. The first is an outwash plain, which is a chunk of ice that's been left behind. The second is a moraine, which again is um, ice and sediment that's been left behind. And these are considered dead ice, you can see here, because they don't move anymore, right? They're not connected to the main glacier, and so they're not retreating with the main glacier. Over time, they melt, and what we have left are lake basins that have been gouged out by the glacier and then the water left behind is from the glacier as well. So the majority of lakes in Minnesota are formed this way from the glaciers retreating. Second thing I'd like to discuss now that we know how the lakes are formed in Minnesota is what the different zones of the lakes are, different areas of a lake. What you're looking at is a cross-section of a lake, and I'm going to kind of draw out the important parts with you so that you can have a similar diagram labeled in your notebook. So the first thing we want to draw in this diagram is the shoreline. So you're going to draw a line that essentially starts flat and then goes downhill. And then Somewhere out from that line, you want to draw yourself some water. Next, we're going to add some plants. 
Okay, and draw your plants in at the top, in between the water and the land, and then down below the water. Then finally, I'd like you to draw down to the very bottom of your lake, kind of the sediment that's sitting down there. Okay, now we can do some labeling. So the first thing you want to label is the three different types of plants that we have in lakes. Those plants that are solely on the water, or sorry, out of the water, um, except of course if it floods, okay, those plants are called terrestrial plants. So they only grow on the land and completely um, not covered by water. So label those. The second type that you've drawn are the emerged plants. You can see their roots are in the water and the bottom part of the plant is in the water, but the top parts of the water or of the plant stick out. Cattails are a common example of emerged plants. And then finally, your plants that are completely under the water are called floating plants, except for their tops, which float on top. That's something like a lily pad, a water lily. And those plants that are completely under the water, don't have any exposed leaves, are called submerged plants. And this is what you might call like, you know, pond weed or something that grows down underneath the lake and when you walk through the lake you can feel it wrapping around your feet and your legs. Okay, so again, four different types of plants. Terrestrial plants, completely on land. Emerged plants are um, a little bit in the water, a little bit out of the water. Floating plants mostly in the water, except for, you know, a few parts that might be up on top. And then finally the submerged plants, which are completely under the water. Okay, the next thing you want to label is the lake zones themselves. So on your diagram, the area from where the water hits the land, right here, to where your submerged plants end, which is right here, is called the littoral zone. So you want to label that area. In Minnesota, the littoral zone is defined as being at 15 feet from the shoreline. So it is a little bit different in each um, state or each organization that's defining this littoral zone. But for our purposes, so it's more visual, visual for you, we're going to say it's from that point where the water hits the shoreline to the point where the submerged plants can no longer grow. Now the reason the submerged plants can't grow anymore is because at that point there's not enough light. So we're going to talk about the light definitions in just a moment. The rest of the area, the limnetic zone, starts with the littoral zone and extends out onto the opposite direction to what we would call the out open water. And it would keep going across the lake until it got to the littoral zone on the opposite side of the lake. So the limnetic zone is that open water where there are no plants growing down below. All right, let's talk about the light a little bit. So as I said, those submerged plants can't grow in all the areas of the lake because there's not enough light in all the areas. The areas where there is enough light for submerged plants and then also algae to grow, it's called this euphotic zone. Okay, so the euphotic zone runs from the very top level of the water down to the point where those submerged plants stop growing on your diagram. So there might be algae growing in the limnetic zone where it's euphotic. Also, the entire littoral zone, as you can see, is euphotic. Plenty of light there. Now when we get to the deeper regions of lakes where there isn't enough light to get plants to grow, 
we call that area the benthic zone. And that's the area that you colored before down here at the bottom. So the benthic zone is where there's not enough uh, light for plants to grow, often filled with decomposing materials like algae and dead fish and um, snails and mussels and things like that. Okay, that should be everything that you need to label on that diagram.